What you hear in the background is the sound from patch number 26 in the original ARP 2600 patch book. It's called Dock Trumpet. I'm going to destruct and explain this patch. I'll let you understand how the functional blocks of the synth work together. And I'll show you some interesting variations of this classic patch from the 1970s. First of all, which modules are involved at all? There are the VCOs 2 and 3. There is the VCF. There is the VCA. And there are both envelope generators involved as well, the ADSR and the AR. Let's start with the mixer section in the filter module. There's only one of the input sliders up or open, the pulse wave input of oscillator 2. But it's not at all oscillator 2 what we fed in here, or what we feed in here, sorry. It's um, VCO3, the third oscillator, which we find patched in here. The flow of the audio signal reads so far VCO3 three into VCF. There's nothing else fed into the audio inputs of the filter. So, what about the filter then? The first thing we discover is that the filter is completely closed. It's switched to 24 dB low pass, as this was the only filter type available in the original ARP 2600. The other filters, which we have here in Arturia's software emulation, are add-ons by Arturia. Please look at the spectrum while I switch between 24 dB and 12 dB low pass. The upper end of the spectrum ends at around 4 kHz with the, uh, with the uh, 24 dB low pass filter, but reaches up to above 8 kHz with a 12 dB low pass filter. But why do we hear a sound at all when the filter is completely closed? Well, here the control voltage inputs of the filter step in, and as we can see, there are two of them in action. The one feeding in the signal from the ADSR envelope by default, internally prepatched, as well as the input which is labeled VCO2 sine wave, but is used as an input for the signal coming from the other envelope generator, the AR envelope. Let me demonstrate the influence which each of the envelope generators have on the filter. At first I exclude the AR envelope from the filter's control voltage inputs. Now the filter opens only to a certain amount, to that amount which I have adjusted with the sustain slider in the ADSR module. The sound doesn't get so bright as before, the high frequencies are cut off by the filter, but the sound reaches its, its uh, maximal brightness more or less at once, because the attack slider in the ADSR module is adjusted to nearly zero. Now for the AR envelope. I close the ADSR slider in the filter module and open the AR slider, the one I have patched the AR's output to, the blue patch cable here. Because there is a long attack adjusted to the AR module, it lasts a quite long time before the filter opens wide enough to let a sound through to get something audible. Yeah. 
The original ARP 2600 patch book suggests an attack of 50% uh, with, the R, uh, with the AR module, the slider, up, up to at about half position, position, and the completely opened ADSR slider in the filter module, and then trying different adjustments of the AR slider in the filter module. So that there is sound uh, at once after hitting a key, which is getting brighter and brighter after some time. Sound at once, but getting slowly brighter and brighter. But with attack adjustments of 50% and less in the AR module, there is no audible brightness attack. I use at least 75% attack here. I will try the original adjustments with a hardware version and show you the difference sometime, but I have to wait until I have put enough money aside to buy one. The AR envelope has a double function here in this patch. It doesn't only open the filter to the amount I adjust with the AR slider in the filter section, the blue cable, but it opens also the amplifier, the VCA, not completely, but to an amount of around 60% according to the original patch book. But why only 60%? Why not open the VCA completely and regulate the volume with the main volume slider called global volume on top of the VCA? Before I answer this question, just listen and watch the spectrum to hear and see what would happen with the VCA running at 100%. Well, there are two patch cables going to and from the VCA, and as patch cables are always, well, uh, suspicious, let's have a look at them. The first comes from oscillator 2, from the sine wave output there, and it doesn't go into one of the two uh, CV inputs, but into one of the audio inputs of the oscillator. And it's indeed the only thing that goes into the audio inputs. Of course, not the audio inputs of the oscillator, but the VCA. Not even the output of the filter, the VCF, is fed into the amplifier. The VCF slider is turned down to zero. All right. So, where does the sound that comes out of the filter, the VCF, go, if not into the VCA? And why do we hear it at all, then? Well, the VCF sends its sound directly to the... To, uh, sorry, to the output mixer. The VCF slider there is open, is adjusted to 100%, whereas the VCA sliders, uh, the VCA's slider in the main output mixer is closed. Nothing that's coming from the VCA reaches the output at all. So, the sound from the VCF doesn't go through the VCA, and the VCA doesn't send any sound to the output. What is the VCA good for, then? It's time to have a look at the second 
of the suspicious uh, cables <laughs> I mentioned before, the cable from the VCA's output to the pulse width modulation input of oscillator 3. And doing so, we easily see and understand that we are looking at the only function the VCA has in this patch, modulating the pulse width of oscillator 3. All right then. The frequency of the sine wave of VCO2 sets the frequency of the pulse width modulation of VCO3 and the VCA sets the modulation strength. And the AR envelope generator sets the envelope of this modulation, meaning how fast the pulse width modulation sets in, attack, how long it lasts after a keystroke, release, and with the help of the AR slider in the VCA module, we talked about it earlier, how far up the strength of the modulation goes. Well, and the reverb, which um, is applied to the sound, rounds it up. So far, the original patch from the 1970s. Let me mess around a bit with the VCA adjustments, the pulse width modulation slider of VCO3 and the frequency of VCO2 now. And with that, we have left the original patch. Let me show some more modifications now. For example, changing the wave shape of the modulating wave, I patch the saw wave into the VCA. Or I add the sine wave of VCO3 to the sound and apply the notch filter. Or adding a bit of chorus 
and it's a bit of delay, but the delay only at one of the stereo channels. Thank you for watching. And now hurry up to my website to subscribe to my newsletter service there. You'll find the link in the description below. Or do you rather stay the last to be informed of what's going on at my channels and in the Rofu MediaNet community? No, you don't. And yes, and of course, don't you dare not to subscribe to my channel here and click on the bell down there to turn notifications on. And having done all this, you can relax and enjoy your day. No, 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 you can't. You have completely forgotten to donate. Thank you, Rolf.